Hi everyone, welcome to another MSI Insider Livestream. My name is Mike and I'm here together with... Ruud. So perhaps you recognize him already because you've joined the stream two times more, I think. Two or three. Yeah, I think a couple uh, of times more. Two and with you and one with Eric, I think. Yeah, I think so yeah. too. Yeah. So um, if you have already seen Ruud, you know he's here when we're going to do real technical stuff because Ruud's our technical expert here at MSI. Um, so I'm already quite a big nerd, but Ruud is a way bigger one. So he knows a lot more about all the technical details uh, about our products. And we have a really cool product here today. You're actually sitting behind it. Yeah. Because personally, I'm, I'm a real desktop guy. Mm -hmm. I'm always into, I like to pick my own parts and build my own system. So I'm always looking for motherboards, graphics card processors, etc. Mm -hmm. So I never really paid that much attention to notebooks, but this one is special. Yeah, it got my attention, especially because <coughs> I'm a desktop guy because, well, the name of this notebook is the, the GT76 Titan DT. Mm -hmm. And DT already says it stands for desktop. desktop yeah. Mm -hmm. And why is that? Because it features a desktop 9900K CPU in it. So, so like, that's not just any CPU, but it's the best of the best for gaming. So that's, is it like the real 9900K or is the it like a one. toned down no, mobile? No, it's not toned down. The it's real thing. The real thing, the real power. So it's also something you can take out like in a Yeah, we'll demonstrate desktop. that in a minute, yeah. So we're yeah. completely going to tear this apart later on in the stream. Yeah, you'll so see the whole insides. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. a 9900K, it does need <coughs> some more cooling than the oh, average notebook, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, it's hard to, put, to fit in this kind of form like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it's not only a 9900K, but next to it, there is uh, an a RTX GeForce RTX 2080. 2080. And that's... A That's regular a mobile version, but it's still very powerful. So, but it's not a Max Q version, right? No, it's not a Max Q. No, Max Q is uh, uh, limited by power, but this one is almost yeah. It's not equal to the desktop, but close, close. Okay. Before we dive in all <coughs> the details, we have a very nice giveaway today. Um, so, if you go to msi.com/to/insider, you will see a very nice giveaway link there. If you don't see it, I will also drop the link in chat so you can directly participate in the giveaway. Um, on Gleam, you will see certain actions you can perform, and the more actions you will perform, the bigger chance you will have to win. Um, we will have several winners uh, throughout the stream, so even if you didn't win the first time, you will still have uh, more chances. Let me see if I can get the link. There we go. I already see some. There we go. So if you have any questions in the meanwhile, please drop them in chat. Um, this is your chance for the very technical questions because today Ruud is here. Um, if you have <coughs> any in-depth questions about notebook, I don't know that much about notebooks, but Ruud does. So uh, definitely put them in chat and we'll try to answer. As I many think the first possible. question is already there. Is it the 2080 Ti? No, it's not. No. no so it's a regular 2080 Ti is just too much. An RDX 20. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's because of cooling, the power, right? the power yeah. and cooling. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so the 2080 Ti is quite a bigger <coughs> power draw than a regular 2080. So yeah, it's yeah. Uh, impossible to cool that in such a compact size. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so a regular RTX 2080 together with a desktop 9900K. Yeah. I think that's pretty much the fastest you can get in a little bit uh, right At now, the moment, right? yes, yeah. <coughs> you also see that because of the power bricks, you not get only one, but you get two of them. So one for the CPU, <coughs> one for the GPU? <laughs> uh, yeah, very close. Yeah, the, they are uh, two times 230 watts. And, and I see it's actually it's necessary. Like a coupling yeah. piece right here. Uh, Maybe I can show yeah. it from the top. We see the two power bricks and they come together <coughs> in... This is like a, a power balancer, right? Yeah, a load balancer. A load uh, balancer. Yeah. So, for example, if the notebook draws 400 watts, it makes sure that she makes sure that uh, it draws 200 watts from either power yeah, brick. Yeah, yeah. This to to load those two, uh, it, yeah, equally, and then uh, a better uh, heat dissipation and also better uh, efficiency. So then we have a plug going in here. So yep. maybe we can drag it out. It's, it has a battery, right? Uh, it has a battery, but <laughs> so don't even though expect it has uh, components. Long, uh, yeah. <coughs> there we go. So. Let me just show this up close. You so this still is a special plug, browse, right? uh, Browsing and stuff, that's really normal. But if you uh, uh, task the, the, the CPU and the GPU a lot, then it's still on right now. Huh? <laughs> battery life will be very low. So here we have the, um, the, the load balancer. Um, and mm -hmm. we see a power plug. And you can use it both ways, right? Like USB Type-C. Yeah, reversible, yeah. It's yeah. a reversible plug. 
This um, is a new, new, yeah, new connector we use on the GT sixty uh, uh, seventy six mm -hmm. and the seventy five. We still had a, like a round one with four uh, pins in it. Okay, with four holes. Depending and this makes sure that you it. don't have to plug in both the power uh, bricks into the notebook, which you can just have one. Yeah, plug and it needs the balancer right? because that will uh, increase efficiency and also the heat. Uh, 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 the Matt 222 is asking, <coughs> why not try to make the CPU and the GPU more efficient so it releases uh, less heat rather than trying to cool it down? Well, good question. Even though we uh, manufacture a lot of uh, cool computer components, we don't produce any CPUs or GPUs ourselves. So for that, we're uh, dependent on our partners. In this case, it's Intel for the CPU and it's uh, NVIDIA for the GPU. Um, so when... Uh, when they have newer uh, generations, they get more efficient. Um, but if you want to use the best of the best, you will always um, go to the maximum with cooling as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and especially if you use desktop components, because this is originally not <coughs> designed for uh, for usage in a notebook. But by getting some crazy cooling in there, you can actually get the maximum yeah. power um, that is that you can get in a notebook nowadays. Um, the Matt's also asking, does that mean we can use a power bank? Um, no, I don't think you can power this from a power bank, right? I've seen some crazy power banks in the past, but yeah, this is a bit much. Yeah, yeah it's maybe <laughs> a bit too much. It's yeah. okay for, for a tablet or a, or a smartphone, yeah, yeah. but... A power bank, I don't recommend. No. Um... Also, the, the voltage is quite different. You cannot use, like, this is not a regular USB Type-C. It's a, a custom power plug. Yeah, so it's not something you can just... No. Attached to uh, to a power bank. Um, A30 XO. Wait, how do you pronounce that? A13XON3. It's asking two power bricks. Uh, bricks must be something nicer under the hood of that kind for that kind of power. Yeah, 9900K desktop CPU, <coughs> RTX 2080 yeah. graphics card. Also, uh, I have to note that the uh, CPU is not limited by power, like you see on some uh, desktop. Uh, a limited uh, power, yeah, the, the power limit one and two. Mm -hmm. Maybe you've heard about it already. So what does that do exactly? <clears throat> Normally you have the turbo mode and it allows you to do turbo or the power limit one. You can do for maybe say 18 seconds or 28 seconds, depending on what settings of the motherboard you have. So and it's then like it will... a quick boost of power yeah, and then yeah. it will and tone down <clears throat> a little bit. Uh, Intel recommends like uh, it's about 118 watts. And then drop it down to 95 because the CPU is a 95 watt part or uh, uh, thermal uh, uh, TDP. So <clears throat> what it means is that uh, you need to cool it. You need to be able to cool it with a 95 watt uh, CPU cooling. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, um, if the motherboard doesn't know what kind of cooling you're going to use, then this setting is uh, sometimes uh, applied. But in this one, we already know the cooling, so we up. The, the, the power limit up to uh, 230 watt for the first uh, 28 seconds, and then it will go back to 170 watts. So, so instead of the 95 watt TDP, you can get a lot beyond that, and that essentially gives you yeah, more power, right? Exactly. Then it's not power limited, so it's not limited by bias, but it's limited by how much you can cool it, with it. So basically, you can overclock with it. Uh, even we will show you 5 gigahertz uh, on all cores. Because there is some crazy cooling in here. And there's you some can crazy cooling, but, overclock but still you can reach... A 900K in a notebook. Yeah, you can overclock it, but still you can reach quite high temperatures. And that's yeah, that, that's for everyone to play with. And, and that's also something that's dependent on where you live, probably. Yeah, if you live yeah. in a very hot country... Then, then you'll have less good results than if you're in, in the North cold. Pole or whatever. Yeah. Something very cool. Yeah, <laughs> somewhere very cool. Uh, yeah, if you have any more questions, just drop them in chat and we'll try to answer uh, as many as possible. Mm -hmm. So we talked about the CPU already, we talked about the GPU, um, but how about memory, for example? Uh, there's four slots and it can go up to 128 gigabytes. I think the default configuration for the highest SKU is 64, so four times 16 gigabytes, which is enough for most cases. So for this model, all four banks are already filled because this yep. is the mm -hmm. model with the 9900K Core i9 and the RTX 2080, yep, yep. but mm -hmm. it's also available with the Core i7 9700K. Yeah, and um, it's probably with uh, RTX 2070. Yeah. Um, 
but they're in. It depends on the region which models yeah. are available. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Sometimes it's also an i7 with a 2080 yeah. or 9900K with 2070. So it really depends on the region what models are available yeah. exactly. Um, also, the SSD configuration can differ from region to region. Yeah. But in total, it offers three times M.2 and one times two and a half inch, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the M.2 well, because the, there the, are the two the M.2 or... slots are three of them, but only two of them are filled, and they are normally in RAID zero. So for speed. so that will give you even better performance yeah. than you mm -hmm. usually get. Yeah. Higher throughput. Yeah. Um, A13 XON3 is asking: Is it a mobile CPU? No, this is no. the actual the real... Core i9 9900K desktop CPU. Yeah. Uh, Arsen is asking, did you talk about the price? No, I'm not aware of that, actually. It also depends on the region, on the exact model that you're getting. Um, so there are a lot of variations, not only with the CPU and the GPU, but also storage, for example. One model comes with one SSD, other F2 and RAID 0, for example. Yep. Um, I think this also comes with a one terabyte hard drive in there. Yep. Um, so many factors um, were that have an influence on the price, of course. Um, Bitgamer X is asking, um, motherboard, that's what it is. Well, there is a motherboard <laughs> in there. Yeah, but it's a custom one, of course. Yeah, it's a custom one. Um, Kiru, I'm going to say, is asking, what's about the motherboard? Well, it's actually a Z390 motherboard. Yeah, it's a desktop chip as well. Yeah. So that's, you might already know that from, uh, from our separate motherboards. Um, so Z390, it's a Z series from Intel, and that gives it the opportunity to overclock, right? Yeah, yeah. The mobile uh, chips they they can overclock with some uh, uh, mobile GPUs, but mm -hmm. CPUs, but not with the desktop one. So and also, you need to if, for example, with a desktop, uh, if you would use B360, for example, you could run that with a 9900K, but then you don't get the overclocking capability. No, it's it's locked. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Arsene is saying, where is Eric? I miss him. <laughs> Eric's not here today. I but can call him. Yeah, he, he will he definitely to join it. in one of our <laughs> next live streams. So sorry, but today um, it's only us. Yeah. Um, can you customize your GPU for later upgrades? Uh, on this model, definitely no, because it's part of the motherboard. So okay, it's, uh, so it's, it's a custom design motherboard. The, yeah. and integrated in there. <clears throat> in some notebooks you see uh, MXM module so you can take it out and uh, replace it the only problem there is that the MXM module um, is uh, and the cooling for the GPU is designed specifically for that MXM module so if you're gonna upgrade it then the, uh, the components are not in the same position and the cooling block will not uh, identically match your configuration so the cooling will be a problem so yes, you can replace it with an identical MXM module, mm -hmm. but you cannot upgrade it or downgrade it uh, as you please because the cooling you need to modify as well, and that's going to be very hard. And that's also quite tricky because nowadays you don't only need to cool the CPU, but also yeah, the, the VRM yeah. on there, so the power delivery for the GPU, yeah, but exactly. also the memory yeah. chips. Yeah, they're all on that MXM module. Yeah, usually the GPU is in the same position. That's correct, but yeah. in, indeed the memory and the VRM part on the uh, on the MXM module, those components differ from MXM to MXM uh, module. So even if you have uh, a notebook that in theory has an upgradable GPU, it's still very complicated to find the right one that you can actually yeah, yeah. swap it out. Unless you can find like a cooling uh, block that's actually suited for that uh, MXM module in that notebook, because. Uh, the cooling block can be fitting your MXM module, but it still needs to fit in the chassis, right? So, yeah. And also need to connect to the heat pipes uh, to the, the outside radiator kind of uh, fans. So, yeah. So really complicated if you yeah. want to upgrade. Sometimes GPUs also the and CPU and the, and the GPU, they, they help each other. So they have heat pipes distributing the power from CPU and GPU to two ends, so with two fans usually. This one has four. <coughs> but uh, you, you connect them also together. So it's one cooling unit for like CPU and GPU mm -hmm. in some notebook. So yeah, uh, you cannot just uh, take out an MXM module and uh, throw in a one that you think is better. So really important cooling in a notebook like this. Cooling, definitely. Uh, High-end uh, gaming notebooks and cooling is the most challenging part uh, together with power. Yeah. Okay. Um... Yeah, we can see it's it's not a very small notebook. No, um, it's huge. How, how many inches is this? <laughs> uh, this is 17. 17 inches. But still, 
compared to previous high end notebooks, it's not that thick actually. Maybe I can show it <coughs> close a bit. I can lift it. A I have bit. seen bigger notebooks that were uh, running a mobile yeah. Yeah. CPU in there. Uh, this one doesn't have a, a, a mechanical keyboard, so that will save some height. That's mm -hmm. definitely true. Uh, but uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the surface area of this notebook is quite big, but it's not as wide as some 17 inch notebooks because the bezels of the screen are uh, a lot smaller than maybe people are used to. Can I? Yeah, so that's quite so thin. It's these maybe are hard quite to see thin. So a dark background. The notebook is not that wide for a 70-inch notebook. Maybe we can just open up something wide so you can better see the bezels. So if you open it, open it up, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's quite very thin. thin. Yeah. So that's a new trend, and we also put it on this one. Yeah. So actually, the space you get for cooling also is a bit smaller. Smaller. Because of that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you remember our, our uh, GD80. Yeah, that's the one with the mechanical keyboard on the, the bottom end. That one was a bit really bigger right, and bulkier yeah, really, and, and also bulky. Yeah. Then we had the GT seventy five, which is quite a bit higher, but that's because also it fitted a mechanical keyboard on top of the motherboard. So uh, with the GT eighty, you had a mechanical keyboard in the bottom part. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it's not over the motherboard and over the CPU and the cooling, but it was just uh, below that, and. Yeah, with the GT seventy five, they they stack it all together, and then you get a really thick yeah. one. So, with this one, they chose to go so a regular keyboard. Less but it still high. is yeah. the Steel Series keyboard. Also has yep. the RGB mm -hmm. lighting, so you can get all the cool yep. effects and stuff on there. Also, the software Steel Series engine, so you can do all kinds of uh, uh, macros and stuff. Yep. And you can also base the lighting on your game, for example, right? Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can connect it to the game, and you can also make different profiles for different games and yeah, highlights and macros and whatever. Yep. I see a very good question in chat. Do you have any inside pictures or is it not ready for our eyes? <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't have any pictures, but later on the stream we will actually open it up and we will take everything out pretty much. Yeah, so we we'll have take... a detailed cam so you can see everything you want. You yeah, can so also ask questions the... if you want to see more details. Yeah, um, and we will take everything out, also the cooling and stuff, yep. so that you can mm -hmm. really see. Take uh... out the CPU because it's in a regular socket like in a desktop. And that's also pretty cool. For example, if you have the, uh, if you buy the i seven model, but later on you decide that you yep. want the i nine, you can actually or a take, Celeron or a Celeron. Yeah, it's also possible. <laughs> you can actually <laughs> take your CPU out and upgrade yeah. it for a higher model. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Pixel is saying I have a GL sixty three and I know it's battery draining while gaming. Is that normal? Yeah, while gaming, of course, the uh, the load on your GPU is a lot higher than when you're in Windows, um, and that will, of course, drain your battery way faster than when you're doing, for example, internet browsing or watching a video. Um, yeah, so definitely, uh, yeah, gaming I, is. I think hard it on means that, that what, even when the adapter is plugged in, that still some uh, battery charge is uh, uh, taken uh, during uh, the the yeah when you're on uh, adapter. plugged in. Yeah. Okay. So how does that work? Uh, that's a technology we call something called uh, in in the old notebooks we call that nitros or something, and that was also part of the Dragon Center application. I'm not sure what the marketing name now is, uh, to be honest, uh, but it's still an, uh, a technique we use, and basically that's because uh, sometimes you have very high peaks with uh, with the GPU, especially the GPU has a power draw that's very. Mm -hmm. Uh, inconsistent, it's not very constant, it's like an up and down uh, chart. And to filter out those peaks, we use some battery charge. It's like a big uh, capacitor or big uh, uh, yeah, buffer of uh, energy. Mm -hmm. And we use that to, uh, to lower the, the spec of the, uh, the adapter. So with a 150 watt adapter, we can go by and uh, lose only a little bit of battery uh, life. Otherwise, we have to put in a 180 watt. And that's a lot more expensive. And we do that mostly and it's on, also bigger on the and GL heavier, right? and the GF. So if you want to take it with you, you would yeah. need a bigger and bulkier. <coughs> yeah. And, and it's not like that it's going to take a lot of battery charge, only uh, up to, I believe it's about 90%. So it will not drop until 20 or whatever. It just so takes it's the like top just off. to deliver peak performance. Yeah. It can draw. Yeah. It's a like a so sort of turbo boost. Uh, and once the battery drops below 50%, then it stops doing that. So, okay. Yeah. 
I think it's fifty percent. I'm not sure. I can look it. I should be able to look it up. Paul <laughs> Zero <laughs> saying today's stream is sponsored by Coca Cola. Well, it's actually uh, not. So I will hide this right here, so no like one it. no one can see what we're drinking. Um, the Matt Tudor is asking, what are the ports? So I do see oh, yeah. a lot of ports on here. Yeah, it's a big one, so you can put a lot of ports on them. Uh, of course, you have the microphone and the, the headphone jack. And this one actually has. Let me show it. Or maybe close. we can, yeah. Do the close up because nowadays you more and more I'll often see this one out, like the combination see. ports for a headset. So you have like the, the microphone and the um, yeah. the headphone part um, in one connector. Yeah, but which, which one... is quite normal for like an ultra book for mm -hmm. uh, the portable ones. But for the gaming, I think a lot of gaming headsets still have two uh, two cables and two uh, plugs. So uh, I think this is the better option. Uh, um, I don't know if the audio is. Uh, uh, I think uh, the, the the headphone plug is also uh, uh, SPDIF, so, so you have it can an optical, transport yeah. a digital signal. Uh, normally, it can. Yeah, on the GT notebooks, you also have an optical uh, signal if you want to uh, attach like an AV receiver or whatever. Uh, then you can. Uh, can also so you do just that. plug in a converter, and then you yeah, can plug in a, your digital audio yeah, cable. Yeah, it's a three and a half, three and a half millimeter uh, jack to uh, Toslink uh, uh, cable. Mm -hmm. You can just buy them in regular stores, and then you can hook it up to any audio equipment with. The and then you can also link. do surround, right? Yeah, yeah, you can do. Yeah. And then we see two USB ports, and yeah. they are. Oh, it's always complicated with the naming because they changed it a few times. This is USB oh, three point two right. Gen two, so that's ten gigabit per second. Um, and and I prefer actually... the, the real name, and it's the Super Speed 10. Yeah, so yeah, 10 gigabit sure. per second. Yeah, so exactly. That's, uh, that's the easiest way, so you know what you're talking about. Yeah. 10 gigabit per second USB ports, and that's actually on all USB ports on this notebook. Yeah. So we have two uh, Type A ports right here. Then we, there's also a Type C port. I think it's on. The, I uh, think this is this a Thunderbolt. One, this is the Thunderbolt, which is, mm -hmm. of course, also, also type -C. USB uh, Type C. Yeah. And then the LAN uh, connector. And that's actually killer LAN on there. So it has yep. a 2.5 gigabit uh, killer LAN yep. in a notebook. And it also has killer Wi-Fi. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and that's quite interesting because the combination of those two, you can actually combine them. Um, so you have, uh, it's called Killer Double Shot Pro. And it will actually combine the speed of your yep. uh, wired and your wireless LAN. So you can get even bigger throughput. Um, yeah, you can control that through the killer software. Yep. And a killer software, you can also, for example, prioritize certain programs. So if you yep. want to make sure that um, your download doesn't uh, uh, affect your the, the latency in your game, for example, you can prioritize the game over uh, your download or stuff like that. Yeah, if it knows the game, it already does uh, set to the highest priority and everything else to a lower priority. So it has some... Yeah, automatic, all, yeah, already, automatic settings, but yeah. you can also adjust that yourself, right? Yeah, if you want to override yeah, you can, it. No. Yeah, you can also say, I, I want to have like uh, my download needs to be the top priority. You can also change that. Yeah. Okay. Um, three free is asking, how long is, uh, is average battery life and time to go full charge? Oh, time to full charge? I have no idea. I, it's a 90 watt hour battery, so expecting this will take some time to, to load uh, uh, up to full because charge. That's, that's a big battery, but it also yeah. has like very beefy components. So I think it can take up to three hours to full charge, I think. And that's just an estimate. I'm not, I haven't tested it. And battery life is really complicated because that really depends, depends on what you on do. Depends on what you do, yeah. Of if you course. do a little bit of browsing or yeah. watching a video. Yeah, probably gaming will take about 30 minutes, then it's done. Yeah, but if you're doing some office stuff, then you could yeah. probably do a couple of hours on there. Yeah, office and browsing should be the, the longest. A uh, couple of hours, I think, because the 90 watt hour battery is okay. And it also features what yeah, what we previously called uh, NVIDIA Optimus. So meaning it shuts down the, the, the GPU, the NVIDIA GPU, while, while it's not in use. So there's, if there's no 3D load, it will just uh, run on the Intel integrated graphics. Because it's the regular K CPU, that one still has the integrated graphics. If you have the KF, for example, yeah. That this one, one doesn't have any integrated uh, graphics. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But because it's it's in there, then you might as well use it to save power on your yeah. battery. Yeah. Um, so it will automatically switch. Yeah, um, it's automatic switch. Yeah. Uh, officially, it's called hybrid uh, display uh, because that's a Microsoft thing. Uh, they introduced it in Windows 8. Mm -hmm. And before that, it was called NVIDIA Optimus, but that's a Windows 7 and earlier uh, technology. I know back in the day, I had a notebook and I had a switch on my notebook. 
Yeah, yeah. And we, I could manually swap between... Yeah, we, we, we had that also in notebooks with the GT72. You can just turn a button or mm -hmm. push a button and then say, okay, switch to the integrated, and then you had to restart. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I don't had... I, I think I didn't have to restart, but um, it didn't really go that smooth yet. So you pressed it, your screen yeah. turns black, and then it comes it back on. It takes like a couple of seconds. It takes and, a couple of yeah. seconds indeed. Uh, yeah. So then I could manually switch in between. But nowadays, you don't really have to look at that anymore. It will all automatically switch based on what you do, right? Yeah, yeah. Now it's uh, it's profile driven, so you can also add your own game and you want to say, okay, I want this game or this program always to run on NVIDIA. Then you can just go into the NVIDIA control panel and then add or uh, adjust uh, the settings there. So how does that work, for example, with the display connectors? Because it has HDMI, it has DisplayPort. Yep. Um, Thunderbolt can also carry a display signal. Yeah, I if you uh, connect like an external device, then the NVIDIA GPU will be activated because those uh, ports are connected to the, the NVIDIA GPU. So then it will draw a little bit more power as well. So don't expect any battery life to be huge because the GPU will be active all the time. But usually, if you plug in an external monitor, you're near a power. You're outlet. near a power. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there are portable uh, displays now. So. Yeah, that's true. And so, also with Thunderbolt, especially. Yeah. So yeah. But usually on the go, people don't use an no, extra no. display. You usually no, no, just no, use the display no, no, in there. No. Talking about the display. This model that we have right here has uh, a 1080p 144 hertz screen, yep. but it also comes with a 1080p 240 hertz screen yep. or with a 4K 60 hertz screen. So there's many variations to choose from. Yep. Um, really depends on the model, uh, which one's in there. It also depends on the region, which models are available. Mm -hmm. um, and that's actually quite interesting because 240 hertz is still a very new thing even for regular monitors. And for when 144 hertz became a thing for monitors, it still took very long before it yeah. was integrated in notebooks. But 240 hertz is really fast. Yeah, we went from 60 to 120 hertz, and then 120 hertz with three millisecond uh, displays, then 144, and then now it's already 240. So that, yeah, that trend seems to continue. And, and uh, also, high thing. refresh rate gets more and more common in notebooks as well, right? Because yeah, many yeah, more models, models are more available now, and th that will help the, and benefit the, the gamer. And also, the color reproduction is really nice. So it's an IPS level display. Yeah. Um, so it, re it will really give you good colors, good viewing angles. I'm yeah. quite I far on the side. <clears throat> I think the, the 4K is more geared towards also designers. So if they want to let, have like Adobe RGB panels, then uh, that's also covered by the, the 4K model. Mm -hmm. But the, the Full HD are more geared towards the gamer, so they are focusing on refresh rate, and they only go up to the maximum of uh, sRGB. Okay. Um... But the quality of the color is really accurate, so it's not like the old days that a TN panel had really off colors. That's not anymore. So also really interesting, for example, if you want to do video editing and you do a lot of rendering yeah. on the yeah. go, yeah, for 9900 video, K, yeah. that will really give you a lot of rendering performance as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So then also important to have a good screen in there. Yeah. Um, Jala is asking, I have a question. Does the GT76 have Windows Precision driver? Uh, yeah, all of, all of the GT and GS notebooks have uh, Windows Precision touchpad driver. So you don't need to install an extra driver and it's all controlled within the the Windows settings. So automatically recognized. Yeah, and it's it's the same for every brand. So that, that's why they created the Microsoft uh, Precision touchpad. So mm -hmm. all the gestures are the same on any notebook. And you don't need to know, OK, I have a Synaptics or I have a Elantec. And uh, OK, you have to scroll with three fingers in Elantec and with two on the uh, Synaptics. You don't have to remember that part. It's all equal. OK. Uh, the Matt Tutu is asking, how does it handle Adobe After Effects? I yeah. haven't tested it, but yeah, it's it's just pretty well, I think. I th it's just like the desktop, mathematics. Yeah. You have a 9900K RTX 2080. Yeah. Um, it will ha handle After Effects perfectly well. Yeah. Maybe um, it's even overkill. I don't know. Yeah, I think it de also depends on what you want to do in yeah. After Effects and what resolution um, you're rendering your stuff. So. It depends on a lot of things, um, but it will uh, perform better than many desktop PCs even. Yeah. Because it really has high-end desktop components in there. Exactly. Yeah. 
Arsene is asking, what's the difference between Ventus and Armor? Uh, graphics card about Ventus? The video Ventus was, was really, really short. short. Yeah, the Ventus is, is a more compact graphics card. Um, so there are, of course, different cooling solutions. Armor is slightly bigger, but doesn't fit any case. Um, so it depends on what you want to do with it exactly. For example, for more compact systems, uh, Ventus is usually a very good option. Um, if you have the space for armor, I think it offers slightly better cooling performance. Um, good question. And also, for example, the armor has um, zero frost of technology, so it will stop the fans um, if the temperature allows it. That's not a feature that's uh, available in the Ventus, for example. So some uh, small differences there. Chris Gamer EX is asking, how much heat does this laptop produce? Uh, if you want to quantify it, then I would quantify it as being how much power does it consume. That's so probably watts, also right? yeah, turning yeah. it into to heat, basically. Uh, that's about 200 watts on the GPU and about 170 watts that it can cool and also produce uh, yeah, uh, con constantly. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's about 370 watts on the CPU and GPU alone. Um, if you look at the power draw on the, on the wall, so even with the, uh, the power brakes uh, calculated in, so that's not inside the notebook, but externally, then it's about 430 watts something. Okay. So 430, 440, that's something, the peak power you can draw from the wall. And that's so th quite a lot for a notebook, but that, of course, has to do with... Yeah, also the with the overclocking there. part and yeah. also with... Uh, yeah. With so, for example, if you run it at a lower frequency, <laughs> because you can also underclock it in the drives if you want to. So, for yep. example, if you want to have it more silent or if you want to have longer battery life. Yeah, there's also an eco profile in it, and then it basically underclocks the, the, the CPU part. And then it sure will also the draw GPU. less power, obviously. Yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. Um, I saw one more question. Uh, Edwin K is asking, are there 10 gigabit LAN um, ports on MSI Gaming Notebook? And when mm -hmm. is MSI coming with a 10 gigabit switch? Yeah, I, uh, I saw that question, and I was double-checking if this one didn't have the 10 gigabit inside, but it doesn't. It's no, this a two is and a 2.5 yeah, killer LAN. 2.5 gig. And uh, uh, we do have a GT75, the, the one the previous model of the uh, the, the big end uh, GT, and that had 10 gig uh, Aquantia LAN in it. So I don't know why we were switching to killer. I think it's because it's of also the software. On what, yeah, what you want to do with it. So for yeah. gaming, killer is really suitable because of yeah. all the good bandwidth <coughs> management. Uh, if you do a lot of content creation, for example, 10 gigabit might be more interesting. Yeah, um, That's also, for example, on our motherboards, we have the same thing. Our creation model has uh, 10 gigabit LAN, for example, whereas the yeah. um, the regular X570 Ace, well, regular, still very high at motherboard, that one has 2.5 gigabit LAN. Um, so yeah, it depends a bit. Um, Baltic Seal is asking, is the cooling system efficient enough to play for several hours without additional cooling or a cooling stand? So I think with that you mean external yeah. cooling, um, instead of only the, the cooling inside the notebook. Yeah, it doesn't need a cooling stand at all. I, I mean, it, yes, it, it, it just forces a lot of air through it. So yes, it will make noise. And uh, not just a little, like maybe <laughs> an ultrabook can be sometimes noisy, but this can be really noisy, I mean. But it depends also on how you put the settings. Yeah, but if you do like full... Uh, now it's uh, silent. Of course, yeah, <laughs> but if you do like a high-end game, like a very new title with uh, uh, ray tracing on and everything, then expect uh, a lot of power to be uh, put in and also a lot of heat to need uh, need to be expelled. So the fans will, will turn on and it, it can just run it forever uh, or not forever. I mean, yeah, you, you will have to go to sleep one time, right? <laughs> but it, but it you can, can game for it, as yeah, long for as hours and yeah. as long as you can stay awake, then the notebook will run, yeah. So there is sufficient cooling in there? Yeah, to definitely. Yeah. Run that, that's why we have some extra room also to overclock. If you do that overclock, it will just, uh, once it goes hot, it just uh, lowers the frequency automatically. So there's no risk in damaging it or that it will shut down or whatever. Yeah. It will just throttle back. Mr. Pixel is asking, is it the same performance of a desktop GPU? Uh, not identical, no. I, I mean, uh, the, the regular uh, 2080 will do about 260 watts. So this one is an optimized or a, a, a better a silicon part. Mm -hmm. And that's a mobile one. And it will draw up to about 200 watts. So 
you cannot expect to be identical to a game uh, to a desktop one mm -hmm. and usually the desktop gaming cards are also overclocked a little bit so it's slightly less uh, powerful as so that one. it's clocked a little bit lower yep. but the chip itself does it also have differences in shaders for example uh no not that i know of no so it's fully unlocked <laughs> yeah uh, it's fully unlocked yeah. okay yeah and it's not a max q like you mentioned in the in the intro uh, the max q's are are usually limited to about 100 watts so that's about 100 watt difference and but later on we'll also play yeah. a game and then you can actually see the power draw from yeah, yeah, both yeah, the yeah, cpu yeah. and the gpu yeah, um, so there time. you can yeah. really see it uh, yeah. while gaming mm -hmm. um, rowan m is asking since this is a real desktop performance live stream are you going to eventually demonstrate it performance live yeah i think are. that's a very good idea to, to do, do that now. right away <coughs> but first if you haven't participated oh, in the giveaway yet, like go it. to msi.com slash two slash insider. Uh, I will also post the link in chat directly to Gleam. Um, there you can perform certain actions. The more you perform, the bigger chance you will have to win. So definitely participate. I think it's also a good moment to draw for as a winner, right? Yeah, sure. So let me draw for as winner. Even if you don't win this time, we will have... Um, Several draws throughout the stream, so you will still have a chance to win. So no need to worry yet. Um, yeah, that's a complicated name, so I'm going to leave this to you. Our first winner is... Semil Akurt. I hope I pronounced it correctly. <laughs> Congratulations, you won our first 20 US dollar Steam wallet code. Uh, we will email it uh, to you um, somewhere in these days, um, so you can expect your code this week. Um, and I hope you buy something very nice with it. Cool game or some software. You have like 3D market stuff as well on Steam nowadays. Mm -hmm. So a lot of stuff you can do with it. Congratulations. Um, and then, yeah, people were asking for performance. So I think we have to show them some performance. You have some software installed <coughs> there. So maybe we can uh, take a look at what we have. Yeah, of course, you'll see the desktop right now. Uh, um, of course, our software uh, to control it all is called Dragon Center. Um, uh, basically, uh, it will start up and show you some details about uh, what's going on. Uh, the so CPU the load, load, GPU the, load, yeah. and some uh, fan RPMs. Sorry about that, see, just oh, opening sorry. up my can. <laughs> You'll see four uh, fans inside, and uh, also the RPMs, only one is spinning at the moment. So it's nice and quiet at the moment. <laughs> also, 64 gigs of uh, memory is uh, showing, RTX 2080, 9900K running at 3.6, which is just basically the base clock and it's just the text uh, thing coming from the CPU. Uh, the most interesting page is the, the performance page or the system tuner. And, and this is where you can do a lot in terms of performance and cooling. And Yeah, and you can also <coughs> control, uh, you can also set your own profiles if you want or performance or theater or whatever. <coughs> Normally, one profile should do it uh, if you just want to uh, set it up and set and forget, um, I would say. And uh, the, this, the, what we call our uh, shift uh, technologies where you can uh, yeah, the, uh, tune the, the CPU and the GPU a little bit. And also so say, this directly okay, affects the performance of your CPU yeah, yeah. and your So GPU. for example, if you have a eco uh, mode, then you're underclocking basically. Comfort mode is if you want to do uh, regular performance, uh, but not uh, uh, extreme uh, cooling, so the, the, it will try to uh, um, balance the, the, the fans a little bit. With Sport, it's just like high performance setting in a desktop. And with Turbo, uh, which is the most interesting part, you can overclock. So Sport is like the, the actual clock speed, like the default clock speed of the 9900K, right? Yeah, with the, uh, the, the Windows profile in high performance mode. Okay. So, so where do you put that in, do your Windows profile? Oh, that's still in Windows because you're not controlling that directly. Uh, and this is a pre-production notebook, so it will not show you high performance, but instead it will show you my custom plan number one. But it's important that if you want to use it, it that you put it in high performance there. No, no, it, it will do that automatically. So. It will do that automatically. So yeah. the Dragon Center will overrule that in Windows already. Yeah, if you go from uh, basically from Comfort to Sport, then uh, I think Comfort is still in balance mode and Sport will set it to high, high performance, performance automatically. Mode. Also, Turbo Mode will set it to high performance, of course. So, for example, in Sport, what kind of turbo <coughs> frequencies will you get? 
uh, for the all car turbo uh, if you do like mm -hmm. a rendering or a video uh, uh, transcoding then it will do 4.7 which is the normal unlimited uh, uh, all car turbo so that's like the same performance you would get if you would just slam in a 9900k in a, in a desktop motherboard. Yeah. In motherboard yeah in an msi desktop motherboard yeah yeah we saw some asus uh, motherboards they have a automatic limitation to 95 watt or 180 and 95 watt so 4.7 is the unlimited um, yeah, yeah. performance you will get from 900k but then you can also overclock it yeah and the that's overclock the part then you will need to uh, select the turbo one and there's a, a cogwheel here and you can control whatever you want also the gpu is overclockable by a certain amount of megahertz not that much <clears throat> also the the graphics memory can be overclocked so the megahertz you set in there is the how far you will overclock it so if you put in 10 yeah, megahertz the, there yeah it will overclock the gpu is a, it's an offset so uh, you can use this uh, uh dragon sander you can also mm -hmm. use our uh afterburner it's basically doing the same thing okay um, uh, we're focusing on the cpu part now because that's the new thing on, on a notebook uh, like this and um uh, at default you can go up to 4.7 with the all cores and uh, if you want to overclock you can set it all to 48 or all to 49 or all to 50. so 50 is the maximum you can do with this kind of software which is still safe but don't expect it to do 50 all the time because um, uh, 50 will draw so much power that even the massive cooling in this kind of notebook cannot uh, get rid of the heat quick enough so only so expect... it depends on what you do right yeah so, so in gaming because 50 means it will run at five gigahertz gigahertz on every core yeah mm -hmm. if you're gaming that shouldn't be an issue yeah. but if you're doing for example video rendering then it will uh, drop down because it will uh, hit its uh, thermal limit okay yeah <clears throat> you, you can uh, uh, if you want to overclock then uh, uh, selecting cooler boost would be good but that's like putting all the fans at maximum speed mm -hmm. and uh, that's good for overclocking but it will make more noise than people will uh, think is comfortable okay or if you have a, like a very good noise cancelling headphones then maybe <laughs> it's good so cooler booster just means cooler, cooler boost means it goes all out yeah then the fans will go maximum so speed. maximum cooling performance um, yeah basically created for yeah for overclocking and also to get rid of the heat quickly and for that there's also a button on the notebook yeah right? there's also a button i don't know if you have the top cam i have the top cam right here so this button will also activate the, the cooler boost so if you want to uh, after gaming you want to make it more quiet quickly then you can run the cooler boost and it will blow out the, the heat the as heat quick as possible and then yeah. uh, you can turn it off and then the fans are nice and quiet again okay so you can start a movie or whatever you want you want to do uh, Alka Bringer is saying, oh, so you don't need MSI Afterburner. Um, no, actually with Dragon Sentry, you can already yeah. uh, overclock your graphics card uh, through the software. Of course, MSI Afterburner has a lot of more features. So yeah. if you want to do certain specific things, then um, Afterburner is still the way to go. Yeah, also Afterburner can be used to monitor your uh, GPU clocks and temperatures and also uh, uh, the power draw. And, and then you can see if, if there's any throttling going on and whatever. Mm -hmm it's mostly focused on the gpu part so for the cpu part you will need the dragon center or you need to use the intel xtu the extreme tun tuning utility uh, which is also included in the notebook okay um yeah so let's uh let's maybe do some benchmarks up. on it yeah i just selected uh, 50 and uh what do you want to see first you want to see the game first or you want to do a Cinebench run? Yeah, we can do a Cinebench run. Sounds good to me. <clears throat> Let me show you some uh, statistics in the background. So it will... Arsen is asking, is there still a big difference in heat if you add a, a laptop stand? So I think it means a cooling stand with that. Uh, it will definitely help because it will uh, pull more air in because the, the bottom part, that's where the air intake is. And this is blowing the air out. <clears throat> so basically th these are the, the exhausts and mm -hmm. it, I think it's air easier comes to see in, yeah, front. comes in from the bottom yeah. as we open the notebook you'll see that it, there's quite some holes in the bottom uh, to, to pull air in for the cooling so basically what you will get is that uh, uh, if you put more air or allow more air from the bottom with a cooling stand 
it will definitely help in cooling. And uh, as you can see, this one already has uh, 2100 points in Cinebench, which is quite a lot. In default mode, it will get around 2000, uh, which is normal for a 9900K, which is unlimited. So it's the same performance you can expect from 9900K yeah, in exactly. a regular motherboard. Yeah. You can even see that it's dropping to 4.7 in the bottom part or the, the last part of the run of the Cinebench. And it was about 97 degrees. So it, it shoots up in temperature quite fast uh, as the cooling cannot really adjust quick enough. So that's why you also can use Cooler Boost and get maybe a percentage higher performance out yeah. of it. But it uh, will automatically protect that it doesn't overheat. Yeah. Even the, 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 the power draw it, it, it will take from the, the CPU, it's uh, about 207 at the maximum here. So that's, uh, that's really a lot. Uh, readjusting the... And to draw that kind of power, you also need a decent VRM in there. Uh, yeah, so definitely. I'm yeah, curious yeah. to see later on, on what, what we will find because yeah, I'm into yeah. motherboards, so I'm always curious about those kind of technical things. Yeah. Um, That's a big topic on motherboards, but not so much on notebooks because there are only few notebooks that have this kind of CPU inside and they are not really comparing on, on, on that kind of mm -hmm. uh, the technical detail. And a, nor a normal notebook will never draw this kind no, of power. No, no, no. normal uh, CPUs are rated for 45 watts. Yeah, that's already the quad core and the six core and the so uh, a high end core. mobile G CPU goes yeah to the, the watts. H, H versions uh, they are uh, forty five watts this one is ninety five watt because it's a desktop and um, the forty five watts will go up to around uh, I would say ninety eighty ninety uh, watts this will go from ninety five to two hundred and seven overclocked so you can see that's a big difference you need <laughs> some extra headroom for the cooling yeah yeah. So that's Cinebench. I think that's uh, an uh, imp impressive result already. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, when the temperature is hotter in the, in the room, then mm -hmm. uh, it, it helps to lower it to 4.9 because then it won't throttle as fast as with 5 gigahertz because you'll put 200 watts in it and it, it will heat up so quickly so it will start throttling itself. Uh, so that's a, a bit of bit trial better. and error also based on your yeah. ambient temperature. What you can Definitely, do. yeah. And for mostly the, the first time you run it, it's the highest. So it, it will drop a little bit mm -hmm. because uh, it cannot sustain a uh, five gigahertz for very long. So, so it's actually pretty cool to fiddle around with a little bit yeah, what you yeah. can do in which yeah. environment. So that's why the, the cooling stand might also help you to get a better score as well. So if you want to do or overclocking. Or if you sit close to the air conditioning, yeah. then. Is there like an overclocking category for notebook overclocking? Because then you, sure. yeah, maybe could, you, you can have like could a, be a thing. Yeah, <laughs> could be a thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see what it does in gaming. Yeah, sure. So we have some. Uh, we also have some stuff to show actually because it does ray tracing as well. So ray tracing, new technology from Nvidia mm -hmm. um, that can actually give you more advanced rendering of, for example, shadows, reflections, stuff like that, lighting. Um, and we actually have a really cool uh, example of a new game that's coming up next month. Um, maybe you can show it already, then we can just talk yep. in the meanwhile. I'll so we will fire open up, up uh, Afterburner so we can see some uh, in-game statistics about uh, the CPU and the GPU. Oh, but first we'll do the video, right? Oh, sorry. Yeah, we're already firing up the game. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I was uh, too quickly. That's a spoiler. Later on, we're <coughs> going to play some control. Which one you want to show? Yeah, we can... Uh... Yeah, start with that one, sure. So this is the, the new one. The, the, let me, I, oh, I think I forgot the name. Is, uh, bring the Deliver Us the Moon. Oh, yeah. It's actually pretty cool because it's, uh, it's from a startup. Um, it's called K.O. Ken. I'm not sure if I pronounced it correctly. Um, and they actually uh, funded this through a Kickstarter. Um, so now they're really actively working on this. I think they're releasing next month. Um, and later on, it will also receive a patch to ray tracing. Um, so they have made a very nice example trailer uh, where you see the difference between uh, RTX off, so ray tracing off and ray tracing on. So you see the way more advanced lighting techniques. I think the release date is on the 10th of October. So it's called Deliver us the moon, and I think it will be available on Steam. 
So definitely check it out. Looks really cool. And in the video, you can really see the example with RTX on, RTX off. The lighting becomes a lot more advanced, but also reflections, stuff like that. See a question in chat, how to download more RAM online? You go to www.downloadmoreram.com slash now, and then it will automatically double your RAM in whatever system you have, right? <laughs> <laughs> Should be the trick. Okay. So that's so deliver us the move. move. Yep. So based on the Unreal Engine, looks really cool. I'm looking forward to, to try it out. Um, I don't think ray tracing will be in right away, but they will add it later with the patch, uh, which should be cool. Okay. And we have another upcoming ray tracing title, Peggy and that's 18. a hot topic right now. Call of Duty, Modern Warfare. Um, so actually the open beta is starting tomorrow. Uh, and what's also really cool about this game is that you actually get it for free um, when you purchase an NVIDIA RTX graphics card or a notebook with uh, RTX graphics in there. Um, so you'll actually get a copy of the game if you uh, purchase this notebook. Uh, and it will also support ray tracing technology. So here you see the example of what ray tracing does in the game, if you put it on or if you put it off. Um, not everyone will put it on, obviously, because it will impact your frame rate. So if you're really yeah. more into esports type of player, um, you probably just want the highest FPS and you don't care about what it looks like. Um, but if you really want your game to look the best, then ray tracing is really cool. Uh, Lord Galson is saying, in the same way I can download this beast. Yes, you can also definitely download it. <laughs> if you have proper internet cables, because it will have to go through and it's quite big. <laughs> More questions? No. No? So let's fire up some control. Control, yeah, here we go. So now we saw some videos, but of course we also want to do some live demonstration of ray tracing. And oh. control, actually, because ray tracing is it's quite complex because you have different kinds of ray tracing. You can ray trace reflections, you can ray trace shadows, you can ray trace, uh, yeah, what else do you have? There's so many different kinds. Um, and in control, you can actually control that. <laughs> yeah, you have a lot of <laughs> See settings. <what> I did <laughs> there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So in the settings, you can um, you can set it to medium, you can set it to high, but you can also individually adjust all the types of ray tracing. Um, so we're just going to play a little, and we're going to search for certain situations where ray tracing makes a difference. Um, in the top left, um, you can also see uh, the CPU frequency. So at the moment, it's 5 gigahertz for all cores. Right. You can see the CPU power draw on top there, CPU temperature, GPU temperature, and on the bottom you can also see the GPU power draw. Yeah, and you will see GPU. that later on, if we play this with ray tracing enabled, then this will go up a lot. Um, let's see if we have some more questions. What about MSI support in Egypt? What's the question exactly about MSI support in Egypt? I don't know that much about it. I'm not located near Egypt, so I'm not sure if I can answer your question there. I think if you go through register.msi.com, then you'll be passed on to the correct person who is in charge for the Egypt and for that product group, because not every uh, support engineer supports all product groups. So some are for motherboard and VGA, and some are for notebook, notebook and yeah. desktop uh, systems. I should hand this over to our tamed racing driver. A racing driver? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All we know is. Yeah. So let's uh, take a look. So let's play some control. And now I want to start a new game. Let's see if we can find some ray tracing stuff. I'm going to make some room because I always yeah, need yeah, a lot of go, space oh. with my mouse. Am I Low safe sensitivity sitting here? Uh, I'm not sure. If I have to quickly <laughs> turn around in game, then I'll probably hit you. No, okay. So I already apologize for that. All the introductions. OK, so here we can already see the power draw went from, I don't know, how, it was quite low. 20 something. Yeah. 20 something. And now we're 168, 175. This is just a game. Uh, it's more like a video. But it is. 
rendering it live, so that's probably why the power. Yeah, yeah, well. it's not a yeah. But still, it does maintain the five gigahertz for all cores on yeah. the CPU. So with gaming, that's no issue at all. I'm here. Yeah. Um, also, in gaming, you don't see like power draws that will exceed 100 watts. So. Mm -hmm. that, yeah, that's only with rendering and uh, video transcoding and that kind of workload. Anyone here? Let me put my mouse a little bit lower so I can. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can already see a lot of reflections. So this is with ray tracing enabled, obviously. So maybe I could just go to the options and toggle a little bit. So here you see all the options. You have the ray tracing presets. So now it's set to high, and that will automatically enable ray trace re reflections, transparent reflections, indirect diffuse lighting, um, ray trace contact shadows, and ray trace debris. Um, if you set it to medium, it will automatically switch the bottom three off. You can turn it completely off, or you can do custom. Um, so I think that's especially interesting. Now it's all off, so let's take a look at what happens to the reflection. You yeah. see it gets almost blurred a little bit, yeah. so you don't get all the details in the reflection. Um, Lord Galshin is asking me, meanwhile, how do I underclock this weight? <laughs> the weight of the, the notebook. Yeah, that's a bit <laughs> hard to underclock. Now, you could leave the, the power bricks at home, but then the work time will be less, or yeah, you know, game definitely. will definitely be less. So let's just try it out. What what happens to what it looks like if we switch this on? So ray traced reflections, number one. So there we already see a huge difference. This is a big one, especially yeah. because we're now watching the reflection of the light. Also because of the uh, how they designed the game, there's a lot of uh, floors that are really reflective. Yeah. yeah. And it, yeah, it's also in the glass and stuff. There yeah. you can also already see it. So that's quite a lot. There we have the lighting. So let's see if we have a setting for that as well. Um, diffuse lighting. Let's switch that. Yeah, so you see some difference. Not as big as with the reflections, but you still see some detail also in the wall and the reflections of the lighting. Let's now just switch everything on. So then we should have the full ray tracing experience. So I think the reflection one, especially in this scene, that's the main thing, right? Because when I switch that yeah. on, that's where we really got a lot more detail. Let's go a bit through the game. I have no idea what to expect exactly. Okay, I'm just picking up everything that I see going through. So here you can see the lighting reflecting really nice. Reflection on the wall, so everything is pretty shiny. Exactly like you said. Yeah, it's designed must have, that way. Yeah, yeah. To get the <coughs> maximum out of the of the ray tracing capabilities. Well, the cool part is that you also can do the ray tracing options on and off while in game. You don't have to restart the game. So Better that's uh, yeah, it's different very easy with some to other games. There in the window, you can see me running around. Yeah. Um, and here we see a lot of reflections again. Am I going the right way? I, hey, so. I don't know. Okay, it's getting darker. That's why you usually have to watch out in games like these. Hello? Hey, okay. excuse me. Someone's Someone here. here. Yeah. Is he going to attack me? <laughs> Everyone's asking can you program the sensitivity of the keys on the keyboard, like new Steel Series? Um, this is a chiclet keyboard, so it has like a fixed uh, point where you press it. Uh, sensitivity, I think you need analog input for that, so this does not provide any analog input. So it's just on or off um, at a fixed point. Yeah. Uh, also is saying you should open a live YouTube channel. We actually have a live YouTube channel. Um, so what did you say in Twitch that I missed? I'm curious. Um, but we can actually see all chats, so we can see YouTube, we can see Twitch, Periscope, Mixer, we have all of them in this chat, um, which means also a lot of people are talking, so sometimes we do miss something. Yeah. Everyone's asking, what type of screen does the notebook have? IPS, VA, or TN? So I think this is IPS level, so it's a 
yeah. similar technology as IPS, but IPS is patented uh, technology. It's um, a trademark. Yeah. It's trademarked. Um, yeah, maybe also patented. Yeah. yeah, I think so. It's an LG brand, so yeah, you, it's you cannot LG use brand. it if you're not uh, affiliated with uh, LG. And because so it does not use an LG panel, it's it's yeah, still sure. still is yeah. Oh, okay. Because it's not an IPS screen, but it's similar technique. Yeah. So, so Samsung and uh, AU Optronics, they have similar techniques, but it's called differently. So, so for example, Samsung calls it PLS. PLS, yeah. uh, PLS is very similar to IPS, but it's called different. Yeah. And AU Optronics calls it AHVA. Uh, which is not to be confused with the other VA panels because it's a different technology. So, yeah, it's a bit confusing name, but all three, like PLS, AHVA and IPS, do very similar things uh, uh, to combat like uh, the, the, the viewing angles and stuff like that. And uh, also the color reproduction. So the techniques are comparable, but are not, uh, you're not allowed to call it IPS. But IPS is the most uh, commonly known one. So everybody calls it, it's an IPS panel yeah. or IPS level. So also Just, in terms of characteristics, yeah. it's like IPS. You yeah. have the good color reproduction. Um, good viewing angles. Good viewing angles. For example, VA gives you the very uh, good contrast, so the really deep blacks. Yeah. Um, so in terms of characteristics, this is closer to yeah. IPS, obviously, than to VA. Yeah. yeah all, all panels have their strength and uh, uh, and weaknesses as well. And weaknesses as well. Yeah, the TN has its strength that it's fast. So if you want to do 240 hertz panels, then you're bound to see a TN Could panel in there. Uh, yeah. And it's also changing nowadays. You yeah, can also get 240 hertz on IPS, different. Yeah. Then but also still, the response and and times for, for IPS are still uh, Yeah, TN is still the fastest by TN, far. Yeah. yeah. So for eSports, you see that TN is still the way to go. Um, yeah. And some but, say, oh, it's an IPS, so color reproduction must be good. But well, don't be confused with that, because IPS used to be like a high-end and new technology. But once it becomes mainstream, then they also produce less uh, uh, high-end IPS panels. And then the color reproduction or accuracy is not a uh, priority anymore, because yeah. it's a cheaper panel. And they will just be as good or less good than than a real high-end VA or high-end uh, TM panel. So the faster Technology doesn't really TM, tell you everything. No, no. no. Basically, LCD still works the same way. So you have a backlight uh, and there's like a filter over it, which is based on the liquid crystals. And the backlight uh, determines what kind of colors you can really output, because the other one is just a filter and blocking the light. A13 XON3 is asking, can I show the screen while playing? Yeah, well, I actually can. Let me just grab this camera. We don't have the best close-up camera, so I don't know if you can properly see it. Oh. It's not focused right now. Focus, focus. Focus. So maybe we should turn on the brightness a little bit. I can turn it a little bit. So it's, yeah, it's hard to see what it looks like in real life because, yeah, the camera does a lot for <laughs> what it looks like right now. Uh, so it is hard to show right now. Uh, he's saying, think it will be interesting to see it in real life. Yeah, that's definitely yeah. the best way to uh, to see the quality of a panel. Yeah, through a camera and then see it in, on a yeah. different monitor is very hard to, yeah, to show the quality. Yeah, the, the camera will define yeah. the quality of what you're seeing right now. The and same, also the monitor you're watching it at. So it has the, the same as TV commercials on watching on a very old TV at home. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 4K and uh, HDR. Well, I'm still watching it on a very old TV, <laughs> so your commercial is just uh, not really happening. Yeah, that's indeed not possible to see. They that. still try it. So I don't know what I have to them. do exactly. I'm just jumping through the level a bit, and I think I will. It's an enemy. No, it's not an enemy anymore. And that's so a weapon. Oh. Um, ah, yes, people are talking about the average uh, FPS. Um, yeah, I think it's hovering like 50, 60, and this is with everything on the highest setting and ray tracing fully enabled. But it looks like it's fixed on 60, so I think v sync's still Let me on. See. Yeah. v sync should be off because uh, v sync will limit your. Uh, yeah, I think it can go rate. higher. 
Where is he seeing? No, that's off. Is there like a frame cap or? No, I think it's just depends. But on... it, it's too too hmm. flat on the sixty, you know. Yeah, it looks very flat on the sixty. Yeah, so it must have been limited somehow. Is there an FPS limit in the settings, maybe? FPS cap. I don't see one. Hmm, not sure. Maybe here? Hmm. No. No, don't know. You see sometimes dropping a little bit below 60, but still it's quite... Because everything's maxed out, still the frame rate is clearly high enough to, to play the game properly. So now we have a gun. Yeah, frame rate seems capped. And I don't know, maybe it's uh, because of the game. I'm not sure if it, the game always caps the frame rate. I know, for example, uh, that's something the crew 2 had. Um, even though you had a high refresh rate monitor, it was still uh, at capped 60, at 60 yeah. FPS. So yeah. it can be something that's just part of the game. Because I don't see an option in the settings either. Okay. Being attacked. So here you can see a lot of the ray traced reflections on the ground, especially. They look angry. Look like a zombie. <laughs> oh, chasing me from both sides. Okay, so that's oh, now they're shooting at me too. Did I? Oh, there's still one there. Um, yeah, so I think the ray tracing is pretty clear here. Maybe we can get a different scene and show what ray tracing does if we switch it on. So here you see the reflections of the buildings very well. So let's now switch ray tracing on off so you see the difference now it just becomes one big blur actually there is hmm, i don't even see that reflection anymore it just no. stops ah uh, if i move the mouse up it does but here yeah, it just stops it looks looks a lot simpler yeah it's a lot more simplistic so yeah. back to everything on and there you see it in way more detail again yeah I think that's a really good uh, item. So quite a big difference. Uh, Edwin is asking, does, uh, does have MSI lightweight streaming software you can stream? What do you mean exactly with streaming software, like OBS kind of thing, or what? He's also asking about the Fire Strike score. Fire Strike Scroll. I don't think we have that installed, right? No, I Actually, my colleague was preparing this notebook, but he got sick yesterday, so <laughs> I replaced him. Uh, I didn't have time to put anything on, like a 3D mark. Maybe Here we can also do that. see the shadows. Yeah. Really nice. I don't know what time it is. It's, uh, yeah, I think we should. Yeah, start tearing start it apart. Opening, so yeah, because we want to see yeah, all the inside wanted, and stuff yeah. as well. I think that's really cool to see also what's inside, how it's cooled, and, and uh, yeah, what's inside. Shall we finish this scene and then uh, take it apart? Yeah. Now you see some dropping of the FPS as well. I mean, I think the light yeah. in the back is also pretty intense, and then shooting, yeah. you see the smoke. Yeah, exactly. That will definitely put more strain on it. So if you want to use RTX, know that your frame rate will uh, be impacted quite heavily because of RTX. Um, of course, you're getting more and more improvements. So in the beginning, RTX was uh, extremely heavy on your FPS. It's getting better. Uh, both game developers and NVIDIA are, of course, optimizing that. So. But this game that really shows uh, the ray tracing effect really well. I mean. I think this one 
shows the di differences between on and off a lot better than, than for example, uh, Metro or Exodus or... Yeah, some games you really have to one. search for, uh, yeah, for ray for trace. Scenes, yeah. yeah, but that's quite easy here. Yeah, maybe because all the shiny windows and, and uh, floors and walls, and <laughs> yeah, that will definitely help uh, yeah, they show the difference. Clearly did design some things in this game to really show what ray yeah, tracing can do. Yeah, it's like a poster child. For it. Some people are hanging around in an interesting way. Yeah, yeah so we're dropping a little bit below 60 FPS. But this is with maxed out settings, maxed out ray tracing. So it dep also depends per game what you can do with the settings. So just fiddle around a bit with them and see what it can handle. Uh, somebody says the limit is in config.ini. Ah, ah okay. so there is a frame yeah, cap. We should frame have done our homework in. better. Yeah. Sorry. But you can unlock it then. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's take it apart, I think. Yeah, let's start opening it up. And here you can see the details. There's a lot of stats here. So this is like the log of the gameplay, right? Yeah, I was just wondering the CPU power is about 50 something. The frame rate is yeah too steady on 60, so definitely capped. And here we were mm -hmm. indoors and then the frames dropped a little bit. More yeah. enemies, more smoke. Now five gigahertz all through the you know what we can see here. And uh, package temperature for CPU about 70, 80. Power is about 60, 65. GPU power is about 190 to 200. So that's basically what, yeah, what we saw. Yeah. So that's quite good. Uh, GPU temperature is probably on the top somewhere. And that's uh, around also 80, 80 ish. Sometimes it drops. I think yeah. when it's around 80, it also revs up the fence. So it will yeah, yeah, keep it quite yeah. steady. At, it at tries to level. keep the GPU always uh, below 84. Mm -hmm. uh, Otherwise, you'll lose some of the, the turbo boost. Okay. Okay, let's turn it off and open it up. Yeah, that's usually a good idea when you're going to open something up. Yeah, uh, disconnect the, the adapter and uh, disconnect everything. Hello, Turkey. We're uh, doing good. How are you? Welcome <laughs> to the stream. Okay, it's turned off. While you unplug everything, yeah. I will draw another winner. In our giveaway, so if you haven't participated yet, go to msi.com slash to slash insider. Don't take it apart yet. <laughs> okay, I'll just <laughs> leave it like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there we will, you <coughs> can perform several actions. Um, the more actions you perform, the bigger chance you will have to win. If you don't see the link, I will also post it in chat if I get my window right. Yeah. Can I already unscrew go. some things and not open the hood? Yeah, let me just show it from the top. Oh, okay. I will just continue in the meanwhile okay. and draw our first winner so people can already see what you're doing. Okay. And you can already see through it. These are like... Yeah, this is also the, the it's air like mesh. intake. Yeah. It's, a, it's a mesh and uh, you see it, it's <laughs> you really see a lot open. Of pipes. Yeah, it's really open because it needs a lot of air. It needs a lot of air. I mean, you cannot cool something that, that's consuming 400 watts with just a little bit of air. You can, but then you need a lot bigger. Uh, cooling uh, surface. So we have our next winner. Congratulations, uh, Roman Berbaum. I'm not sure if I pronounced your name correctly, but congratulations. You also won a 20 US dollar Steam code. We will email it to you uh, in one of the coming days. Um, so if you haven't participated yet, go to msr.com slash two slash insider and make sure to participate. And then we'll continue with taking yeah. this beast apart. I think the top uh, top cam yeah, is the easiest to see what it is. Sometimes it needs a little bit of help. So, so it's it like one big plate on the bottom. Yeah, it only has about six screws. So Don't try this at home, by the way. <laughs> it's not really recommended to no. open it, but you can open it. Sometimes you will see there's like a small sticker that says warranty void, mm -hmm. especially on our older notebook books. But um, 
you can still open it. It's not that your warranty is really void, but mm -hmm. it means uh, once you open it and you need to send it in for repair for some issue, uh, they will extra carefully check the inside that you didn't accidentally uh, damage something inside that caused uh, the defect. So if the, the seal, now we call it factory seal, so there's a sticker over it, over one of the screws, seeing factory seal. So it means you broke the seal, you've looked inside, maybe cleaned it or upgraded it, which mm -hmm. is your right. You can do that, no problem, especially in Europe, there's no issue. <coughs> uh, but uh, once it's open, then the repair guys will take an extra good uh, look, good at, look it. at it so, to see, to see yeah. if you didn't damage it. Yeah, basically um, that's we the, also have the a sticker case. on the bottom of this one that says it's an engineering sample. Yeah. So please note that some things might be slightly different than uh, yeah. what you see in the models in the store. Um, yeah. There are usually minor differences. Yeah, we saw on the GT75, we also had like a pre-production model and then we had like the, the copper uh, heat mm -hmm. pipes. And then we saw the production model and they've painted it black. So I'm not sure if they're also going to do that with this model. Okay. Uh, we had one production model, but it's not in the office anymore, so I cannot really take a look at it now. So what do you want to see first? We can see a lot of cooling now. Yeah, so the cooling if you open is it up yourself really impressive. Notebook, yeah. You can, of course, do that to swap out your memory, upgrade your memory, to put a, in an extra M.2 yep. SSD right <coughs> there. Um, in here, right now, there is, I think, a one terabyte hard drive. Yep. But you can also upgrade it for a bigger model uh, if you want to, or a faster model, or yep. whatever you like best. Um, for the hard drives, there's one thing to note: the the, the bracket is designed for like a, a nine millimeter height uh, um, SSD or, mm -hmm. or hard drive. And now we also see like the the four terabyte. No, I think sixteen terabytes or even the, I don't know how big they are these days. But the bigger uh, capacity ones, they also mm -hmm. have a higher uh, um, package. So basically, up to fifteen uh, millimeters. And the bracket is not designed that way. So uh, it doesn't so always fit. So make sure you fit. get the yeah. right height. So the dimensions of the, the, the two and a half inch drive is also important, especially the height. The rest of them is a, a standard. And also for M.2, you have like yeah, different yeah. lengths. I, I think the M.2 is the most uh, upgraded part in any laptop nowadays, or the SSD, I must say, because you can also buy two and a half inch uh, SSDs. And uh, I think <clears throat> that's one of the most asked questions uh, uh, we get is uh, how can I upgrade my notebook with an SSD or with a bigger SSD sometimes or with an extra SSD if you will. Um, <clears throat> that's something that we get asked a lot and that's uh, because people know that SSD upgrading is usually the, the best uh, thing to, to if you have an older notebook with only uh, still only a hard drive inside. That then, will make it a lot faster. Yeah, then yeah. it will make it much more usable and uh, uh, also, the older notebooks got upgraded to Windows 10, and yeah, then uh, SSD will help you a lot to, uh, to keep it longer and enjoy it longer. Mm -hmm. uh, Edwin's asking, why not the laptop stand under a small angle so there is more cooling space? Well, there are actually small feet underneath, and it will already yeah, put it I'm in not a sure slight angle. I'm sure if I can show you, but these are the feet. These are the feet, and yeah, this one is lower, so. It, it does lift it is the in a back. slight angle yeah, already. So. It, it does yeah. lift the back a little bit, so it will get more air in. Yeah, definitely. But the more feet you put under it, then also it looks more bulky mm -hmm. and yeah, more massive. So that's two M.2 uh, inside already. So that's a RAID 0 configuration. <laughs> and that's said they're already saying. Oh, that baby is full of pipes. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, the, the heat pipes is the also. Can we do uh, a quick count? One, two, three, four for the GPU. One, two, three, four, five for the CPU. So yeah, nine and that, in total. There's, there's another two. Uh, and one on the, the bottom. On the, yeah, on the, because there's the extra another, GPU yeah. plate there. Uh, this is the, so the ten, VRAM yeah. and the memory part of the, mm -hmm. of the GPU. So this is the GPU itself. This is the memory and the VRM part. That's and below I think that. these are also separate yeah, yeah, pipes. Yeah. So it has two there. Yeah. So we have so, four. So five six basically so for the old GPU and five for the CPU. So 11 in total. Yeah. So show it from top. So here you have the two in the base plate for the GPU. Yeah, we'll take it apart and you yeah. can see uh, what's what. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven heat pipes in total. Yep. That's what the brochure said, so I'm <laughs> glad it, uh, <laughs> it matches. And fun <laughs> fact about the cooling, actually. 
if you take everything out, which we will do later on, the CPU cooling part, the, G the CPU cooling part, the GPU cooling part, the cooling plate for the GPU, and the fans, if you add the weight of them up, it's exactly two to gram, one kilogram. Yeah. So there is one kilo of cooling inside this notebook. I should have made a quiz it's, out of it. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's <laughs> not even a couple of grams off. Like if you put all those parts on a weighing scale, exactly one, yeah. one kilogram. Uh, DV Hulse is asking, does it have an M.2 slot? It has three. Yeah. Uh, in this specific model, oh, yeah. we, uh, there are already two filled with M.2 SSDs. Yeah. So what's the size of these? Uh, this is an 80 uh, millimeter or 8 centimeter. Uh, and in part. capacity? Uh, capacity, these are uh, 2, 5, 12. Uh, so one terabyte in RAID 0. Yeah. <coughs> so you I can This one is using the Samsung ones, and I believe it's like um, uh, the PM. 961, which is, uh, I think it's a, an OEM part, w which is comparable to the 960 EVO. But that's also dependent on region, on the exact model yeah, that you get. Yeah, so definitely. Yeah, yeah. So usually we just uh, say, okay, it's like a one terabyte SSD or two times 512 SSD, and we don't specify which brand or model. Uh, but in a model like this, you can really count on it as a high end part. And also, for example, if you have a hard drive, we will specify like if it's a 7,200 RPM yeah, or 5,400. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you will always get that spec. So yeah, yeah. if we say it's 7,200, yeah, we won't, won't specify the brand or the model, but we do specify that spec. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So the third slot, you can add another one. So if you want more capacity. So let me show uh, it up close a little bit better. There we go. I need to lift it a little bit. Yeah, we can get it closer. So here you can already see the two SSDs, and here is another slot, and you can put one more. Yeah. Okay. So also, now everything's still in there. Yeah, also <laughs> memory is one of the, the things that people upgrade. Let me just show it up close. Yeah. And it's in a memory slot. Over here, there's two on the on on the bottom side, on the the accessible side, but there's two more on the other side of the motherboard. So, so four slots in total. Yeah, those are less accessible. Um, it means it's not impossible to access, but I wouldn't recommend it as a user to take out this one completely because it, it's too much effort and mm -hmm. uh, the, the risk that something goes wrong is quite big, and then you're not covered by warranty. So. Um, that's a thing, uh, yeah. especially on the GT notebooks where you have four slots on them. That's always a risk. So, and also for the the really slim ones, the GS notebooks, uh, some models they have the the dim slots on the on the accessible side, so where you take mm -hmm. off the bottom cover and you can immediately see them. But sometimes they're on the other side of the motherboard PCB, and then uh, I wouldn't recommend it, uh, taking it out uh, because it's it's too risky. But for example, because it comes in different variations, this model, yeah. some only have two dims filled, and then it's always the ones yeah, underneath. Yeah, yeah. So it's always um, the ones that are easily accessible. Yeah. <coughs> Those are the ones you can yeah. still add in memory if you want to. Yeah, definitely. That's uh, uh, something we've learned in the past that, yeah, the, the non-accessible ones uh, we need to fill up and not the ones they can exactly. upgrade easily. Edwin K is asking, is the CPU on the motherboard changeable? Yes, we will show you now. later on in detail. Oh. Right now? Right now. Right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so unscrewing is, yeah. Very so it's simple. like two separate parts. So here you have like the, the GPU yeah. part, and oh. here you have the CPU One part. One thing of the I cooling. should do first is the, the, the fan, taking the fan out because it will block the, the heating. Um, Twitch, we have the question, how much can you upgrade in total? Yeah, that depends on uh, the model that you have. So this model uh, is already an extremely high-end model. It, for example, already has all four memory slots filled. Um, you, you can replace them by 32 model, 32 gig models. Yeah, so you can go up to a total of 128 gigabytes yeah, but of But those memory. modules are really rare. So I don't think there's a lot of them in the market yet. So not yet. But they've got more Even common. in, in yeah. the desktop DIMM uh, sizes, mm -hmm. uh, 32 gigs is very rare and really expensive. So not sure if it really pays off. So for the memory, 
that's something you can upgrade. Then yeah. the two SSDs, the two and a half inch hard drive or SSD, you can. Yeah, well, in this model, it's hard to upgrade the CPU because there is already a 9900K in there. So what higher CPU for this socket would you want to put in there? <laughs> there don't there don't is one. There there is none. So that's yeah. So we and, can you yeah. took out the the CPU cooling part. So maybe that's interesting to show up close. Yeah, basically it's a a, a copper cooling plate, and then it's just uh, added to the the socket one. <coughs> and the socket is over here. It's a regular desktop socket. There's no slim line or whatever. It's just the regular. Uh, what you see on a desktop motherboard as well. Let me open it. And you can take it off. So this is exactly how you would have it on a, de on, on a, on desktop a regular one. motherboard. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. So but you can replace it with a Celeron if you think, okay, 9900K, I don't need it. If you want to have better battery life, then you can put a Celeron in there. I'm not sure because the Celeron doesn't have all the speed step things. So it might consume as much power. In yeah, idle. probably does, yeah. Uh, in idle, it <laughs> in does. Idle, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> On max load, it won't consume as much. Yeah, that will be a bit different. So here you can see the I did see one question about the thermal paste. But uh, I think people probably ask, well, uh, are wondering if we use like uh, liquid metal and stuff. Uh, but in production, it's not really worth it. Uh, uh, yes, you can get a little bit better cooling uh, contact with uh, liquid metal, but liquid metal is also conducting electricity. So if you spill some, it becomes like a, a, a risk that uh, something gets... Uh, that you short circuit. Yeah, exactly. So that, that that's something you don't want. And uh, we need to produce like uh, hundreds of, uh, of these machines. And then uh, the risk is, uh, yeah, it's simply not worth it. <clears throat> yes, you can get a little bit higher overclock results maybe or better Cinebench scores, but um, it, it won't be like a massive difference. Mm -hmm. So you took out one fan. We can easily see the other one here. Yeah. But there are mm -hmm. two more fans, right? Uh, there's two more fans, yeah. I'm not sure where they are exactly. I know, they're right there. So because we cannot we... really see them, no. but I saw them. That's a part where it's really hard to get to, but you yeah. can maybe see them through a little bit here underneath. There are actually two more fans. Yeah, so there are four I, I fans saw some, yeah, something on the website where they're supposed to be. So they're supposed to be somewhere here. Yeah, they're underneath the CPU, basically. Yeah, and yeah, they're, they're also uh, probably having like a, a backplate to the, uh, the motherboard, cooling the CPU from the bottom part. Mm -hmm. But I, I haven't taken it that much apart because we still needed to do the demo today. So yeah, <laughs> we cannot destroy it yet. <laughs> no, no, it's not. Yeah, we st it's still high end uh, material. So um, yeah. Also interesting about the CPU because oh, I'm yeah. always interested in power deliveries and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can actually see here the VRM for the CPU. Yeah. And it uses 650 amp power stages. So that's insane for a notebook, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is not. I have uh, never seen this in a notebook before. Uh, I, I've never looked at it that way because normally uh, the, the, the CPUs in a notebook are like up to like 80 or 90 watts in maximum. So, so you never need a VRM no, like this it, in a notebook? No, it's, it, yeah. it, you, you probably have like on a, uh, the same power delivery as on a, on a H310 uh, motherboard desktop, you know? It doesn't need to be that big. Mm -hmm. So yes, it needs to be efficient and small because that you can see the, the chokes um, yeah, are a lot smaller than on your regular motherboard. They're probably also more expensive. So small means usually more expensive as well. Yeah, so here so, you have the, like, the power stages and yeah. they're also cooled with, you have the cooling pad on top of there. Maybe can show it that way. So here are, here are the power stages and these are the chokes, which are already uh, you know, small outline packages. So six 50 amp power stages that, yeah. of course, can deliver even more power than the uh, CPU can consume. Yeah. Um, but that's also part of, uh, it has to do with temperatures, right? Yeah. Because if you have uh, these strong power stages, they also run cooler than, yeah. Yeah. for example, So it's cooled ones. together with the CPU and uh, um, the, the, the power stages are cooled through this uh, yeah, like metal metal strip with a 
uh, thermal pad on it. So yeah, th this part will cool. Uh, this will produce like 207 watts, but this is also losing some power because yeah, it's not 100% efficiency. Mm -hmm. And uh, that will equally also yeah, do like maybe 10 or uh, 20 watt on, uh, on, on wasted heat. So th this cooler alone needs to take care of about 220, maybe 250 watt, something like that. So that's so that, also why it has a lot of heat pipes and heat yeah. sinks. Yeah, and even still, if you yeah, if you run all the cores at five gigahertz, then it will still be very hard to cool. Yeah, <coughs> especially cool. in the workloads we, we showed you, like Cinebench is very tough, very intense. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's like a three D rendering workload. So next part is the GPU part of the notebook. Yeah, I'll start working on that part. So. Now it's really clear to see that they're separate elements because you, you yeah, often yeah. see in notebooks that it's one element and the heat pipe yeah, covers or, or both the GPU uh, and the CPU. Attached to each other, uh, mm -hmm. either screwed or, or uh, sometimes even uh, one, uh, one single uh, package. I'm losing the screw. Where is it? Oh, we'll find it later. Oh, no, it's just still here. Okay. Let me get it out. Nintendo is saying, considering that Intel does not like backwards compatibility upgrade, uh, does not like backwards compatibility, upgrading won't be a thing. It depends a bit if you, for example, have the 9700K model and you want to upgrade to an i9-9900K model later, then of course you can still uh, still upgrade it. Hussein Hani is saying, why would you replace an i9? Yeah, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No need to. If you have the top model already, then there's not much to upgrade anymore. Um, Edwin K is asking, is there a possibility to change the fan after five years of use? Yeah, uh, it's possible, but you need, you need to, to go... get your hands on. Exactly right, you that need model. to get to, yeah, yeah. get to our uh, repair centers because these are also custom made. So basically the, these form factors are not really standard. Uh, sometimes you can buy them from, through eBay or maybe AliExpress. Uh, but we cannot really control that quality, so we have no idea what they're selling. Uh, yeah. So to be sure, and especially on a notebook like this, so there might be a performance difference. Yeah, if yeah. You but just sometimes they, they they can be equally good, or we have no clue, so yeah. we, we cannot vouch for them. And yeah, uh, if it's an older notebook and it's already out of warranty, then just try it. Yeah. Uh, if it's still within warranty, just go to our repair center and it will be And if repaired. it still works, there is no need to replace them. It's not like every no, no, but couple sometimes, of years you need to replace yeah. your fan. No, sometimes the, the, the fans just gather so much dust that it will yeah, uh, start getting hot and uh, also make some noises. Uh, more than yeah, still cooling wise, it might be good. But it, yeah, if the noises are annoying, mm -hmm. then yeah, still replace it. Some fans can already be bought at AliExpress for about six or seven euros. Mm -hmm. So that's it. So this is the GPU block. <clears throat> you can also see that the GPU uh, chip itself is also really big. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Should I hold this one? Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, I was pointing at it, but I wasn't uh, really showing it. So this is a really big chip. Uh, uh, it's actually larger than the CPU part. The CPU part has a metal uh, heat spreader over it, like a normal like desktop Like a cover, one. pretty much. Yeah, and the the the, uh, the mobile GPUs, the or GPUs on the graphic cards normally don't have it. So that's a uh, really. That's big also, one. for example, some people delete the CPU and then they actually take that cover off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that's not something we would recommend, especially not on these a are CPU soldered, like these because so, they're soldered yeah, indeed. Then it's um, no use. The, uh, you can do it. It was quite popular with bit. older generations, like the 7700K, for example. That one did, yeah, wasn't yeah. soldered. No, um, and the 8700. It, yeah. Yeah, so it could give you uh, better temps if you delete yeah. them. Um, but for GPUs, um, deleting is never an option because there is no uh, heat spreader on there, so it will already have direct contact with the GPU. So this one, uh, I was just unplugging the, uh, the cable for the uh, hard drive, which is a small flat cable, which is like a, a, a small connector. I'm not sure. I don't think we're having a detail cam that is capable of. Yeah, this is very, very so small. small. 
But basically, the, the flat cable, is it focusing? Yeah. And uh, these contacts will uh, join into a, in a very similar connector as this. No, it's behind the block. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's, there's a small latch you can lift up and put down, and then it will lock the, the flat cable in place. So I'm sorry, the, the detail cam is not really capable of capturing this uh, really well. And the flat cable provides both the power and the data transfer, right? So yeah, the yeah. SATA connector and the power connector. Yeah, it's just to, to save some space in a notebook. This is a very common thing to do. But we need to take out the, uh, the hard drive because it also is attached to the cooling plate. Yeah, the cooling plate uh, share uh, uh, the same. So this is the hard drive. So it's a one terabyte model. Yeah, and this is a blue. Then is, is this a 7200? I think this is a. I think only the black side. Yeah. yeah. It's no, a but it was just an model. example. But yeah. Was, yeah. Yeah. But. What it I says on the website, it's 7,200 new. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily have to be Western Digital. It can be a Seagate, it can be anything. But it will be 7,200 RPM. Yeah. So we took out the screw. This one is a shared hole uh, for the hard drive and also the heat, pli the heat plate plate. Then we need to take it out. And we see some thermal pads being left on it. That's OK. So. So basically what it does is it's uh, cooling the memory chips. Maybe I'll hold it, uh, tilt it a little bit. Okay, it already looks kind of like a graphics card. You see the memory chips like around it, you see. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, here are also the chokes. So meaning there's also power circuit uh, and power stages below uh, these chips. And also here on pads. top, yeah. there are also four power stages. Yeah, I think this is the main uh, main thing, yeah. And that's also cooled. Also with uh, the cooling pad yeah. on there. It, it, it's closer to the end, so it will uh, yeah, get, get rid of the heat through these uh, vents, through these uh, fin stack. It's like mirror-wise. <laughs> <laughs> OK, anyway. <clears throat> so basically, there you have it. It's uh, yeah, open and naked motherboard. A naked GT. Yeah, 76. There are some small Titan things to DT. mention that yeah, there's a Wi-Fi card. Uh, yeah, so here you have the killer yeah. Wi-Fi, and here you have the uh, the killer chip for the regular um, yeah. LAN right there, so the 2.5 gigabit. Yeah, about the Wi-Fi, this is a Wi-Fi 6 uh, uh, kind of device. There's also a lot of notebooks that are still having Wi-Fi 5, and we also get questions from from uh, consumers that say, okay, can I just upgrade to a Wi-Fi 6 card? Um, you can do it, but it's not ideal because the the, uh, the antennas for Wi-Fi 6 are a little bit different. So they have different uh, requirements than Wi-Fi 5. So just dropping in a Wi-Fi 6 card won't uh, give you extra speed or uh, won't give you the, the, the best uh, performance, performance possible. For, yeah. for uh, the Wi-Fi 6. Yeah, yeah, so better to buy the, the notebook with the Wi-Fi 6 if you have that option or stick with the Wi-Fi 5. then you're guaranteed to have the best performance. So uh, just replacing the, the module is not always uh, sufficient uh, yeah, to get, to get a Wi-Fi really, 6 performance. Yeah. I see uh, Nintendo is saying, retweet MSI is not working for me in the giveaway. We will look into that and see if we can solve it. Um, Marington is also saying, that's a massive die. What GPU is that? This is the uh, GeForce RTX 2080. Yeah. So yeah, it's a... Uh, yeah, it's really big. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a big chip. Yeah. Um, Arsene is saying, MSI didn't add RGB inside the notebook. Oh, um, yeah. Well, we, well did. we actually we didn't demo it. Here we have the RGB strip. Of course, you can see it on the outside. That's the front strip of the RGB. Yeah, yeah you can we, see it uh, Yeah, maybe through here. Uh, OK. Yeah, so Some that's transparent. Uh, the light strip there, you can. We have the, the bottom part there. There is a like, semi transparent part. Yeah. And the is, yeah. addressable RGB strip that's located behind this. And also we'll some, some side panels. Yeah, that's maybe it's interesting to show yeah. because those are illuminated yeah. by these LEDs. So we have yeah. an addressable RGB uh, strip and we have 
normal RGB uh, parts on the, both sides yeah. that illuminate both sides. You can control them through uh, the, the Steel Series engine software. So basically, the, the, with the keyboard, you can also change the light and the Steel Series software, and also the RGB part of the, the bottom of the notebook. So you can also control that. And what we can actually see inside the notebook is also the RGB controller. So that's one, that one's right here. So maybe we can take the tape a little bit off. And there you will see, uh, my hand is in front. You just have an ARM chip right there. And that one is dedicatedly there to control the RGB lighting on this uh, notebook. So there is some RGB stuff inside here, definitely. There's also wire going all the way up here. So there's also a strip inside, right? Is there? Yeah, there is a, a red LED strip that will show on the back of the... Oh, the back part. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. okay. Yeah. And I don't have to open it. I can just... I think that's not something we can reach easily, but right oh, here... Oh, yeah, it's it the is. back of the notebook, yeah. yeah. It's a car theme thing, I guess. Um, Alka Bringer is saying, I wish there is an M.2 slot for some storage upgrade. Well, there are three M.2 slots. Two are already filled in this specific model, and you have a third one. So yeah. you can expand it if you want to. Yeah. Edward21 is saying, I hope the RGB boom will end soon. Luckily, there's always the option to switch it off. Uh, Edwin is asking, does an uh, MSI laptop have error codes on the motherboard or LED signals? So like uh, LED debugging. Not on the notebook, no. no. Because they're also not meant to open up? No, no, yeah. It's not like user replaceable parts or, yeah, you can replace the CPU, but basically it's not really, we encourage people to do it. So mm -hmm. if you need service, just go to the service center. Then we have some more stuff inside that's maybe interesting to show. Maybe the BIOS chip right there. I'm not sure okay. if we can get it a little bit closer. So right here we have the BIOS chip, for example. So you see all the, the parts that you would see on a normal motherboard as well. You have somewhere, yeah. often in a sometimes a little bit weird location if you're used to regular motherboards. Um, so here's the LAN chip. That, of course, makes sense because here is the LAN port. Wi-Fi card, VRM on top right there. So it's, yeah, sometimes it it's a little bit of searching where can I find which part? Because in, an, in a regular motherboard, you know where to search and here, sometimes you don't. Um, but it's all in there. And there's a lot of chips on the bottom as well, on the back of this PCB. And here we have the subwoofer, battery pack. So it actually is quite a big battery, but of course with uh, a 9900K. Yeah, <coughs> yeah the you power will draw will it. be a lot, uh, even on batteries. Like the 9900K was never designed to be in a notebook, but yeah, you, you can still do it. So, shall we draw another winner in our giveaway? If you have participated yet, go to msi.com slash two slash insider. I will also drop the link in chat right away. And I will draw our next That's winner. One question saying, can you change the battery? Yeah, basically you can, but it's hard to get one. Uh, but uh, still on eBay and, uh, and uh, AliExpress, uh, sometimes you can also get the batteries from there. So after warranty period, then you can go to those sources and uh, within warranty, just go to the MSI service center. We have our next winner and it's a complicated name <laughs> again. So it's up to you. Uh, okay. Our next winner is Ao Kele. Congratulations. You also won a 20 US dollar Steam wallet code. We will email it to you in the coming days. If you haven't participated yet, please do so, because we will be giving away more later out through the stream. And I'm sorry about my pronunciation, because that was probably not the way it's supposed to sound. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> so the battery you can replace, but yeah, it's hard to find parts um, specifically. If you want to look for uh, any, uh, can you give the detail? Can yeah, you? there's usually uh, like a, a part number on the battery as well, and usually it starts with in an MSI with BTY, like battery in short, 
and then like L781. If you Google for that one or search on eBay, on, Google, on AliExpress or whatever, then usually you will get to the right part. But also please note that if you do that, we cannot guarantee that. No, we cannot the, guarantee yeah. it and only do it when uh, the warranty is already off. I mean, uh, if you have warranty, go to the service center and they will help you. Uh, Mark Marcus Jones asking, what GPU is in there? It's the RTX 2080. Uh, Nintendo says, still waiting for my Steam Wallet codes on my one a couple of months ago. That's strange. Um, because you should have received it. Please check your spam box. Otherwise, make sure to be check that. Make sure to join next week. If it's still not in there, we will try to find another solution. Because if you want, you should have received it. Uh, Mad5 saying, can that CPU be overclocked inside that beast and what are the temps on idle and full load? Uh, yes, you can overclock it. Yeah, uh, you can temps put it... will be 97, something like that. And idle, uh, I have no idea what the temps are, nobody cares. <laughs> I mean, yeah, what is what is it doing in idle? About 40, 5, 50? I don't know. Yeah, low. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. And the fans will sp spin faster when it's needed and otherwise it will just let the temperature rise a little. Um, yeah, so let us know if you have any more questions. I think we've covered pretty much anything in there. Yeah. So you're going to put everything back in, yeah, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We did it before and it still worked, so. We also had a question about the fans I saw earlier. I don't see it again. But, um, <coughs> if you can swap out the fan inside, that you still use the metal cover? I'm not sure if you can what? take it apart. Well, it, it's part of the, the metal as well. Okay, I mean, so the fan uh, is really integrated in the in the metal. Yeah, in, in this model it is. Sometimes you see like uh, three screw holes, so you can really take out the, 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 the moving part. So it's not really that you can get but, the standard size part and just no, swap no. it out. You this really this need seems to be glued, I think. So this one is like one package. You, can, you have to yeah. buy the whole thing. Yeah, you can unscrew these parts, but if I look at the metal part here and the... Uh, yeah, the, 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 the stutter part is, yeah, PCB part is just glued to the metal part, so it's um, one package. Nintendo, can you, uh, did you participate in the giveaway? Because then I have your email address, and then I can send you an email to see how we can solve it that you didn't get your code. Or is it pronounced 9, 10, the? <laughs> Yeah, I think I have your. I should have your email address. So I will. Uh, I will send you an email, and then we can see how we can fix that. Um, I also saw a question from Edward. Um, if if there's an option to switch off the RGB without the software, if we can include that, that could be What's something. Um, now. To switch off the RGB, you need to install the software to switch it off. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe that's something we could also do on a hardware level, like with a button. So maybe, maybe you have to unplug this cable. And... That would also work, <laughs> but that's more effort than uh, installing the software, probably. But uh, the software is there for more than just, yeah, I mean, still series engine. Yeah, there's a lot more in yeah. there. But still, it's... some people, they don't want to use the software, and then yeah. you cannot switch off the RGB. So that. Something I think we, if you, we can feedback. Yeah, if you uninstall it, or if you switch it off and then uninstall it, maybe it'll just keep that setting. Mm -hmm. Not sure though. It's uh, yeah. Let me see. We have one more question from Edwin. What's the uh, the, the trick to get more out of a battery? Can MSI use it? Um, well, there is one big difference. The branch you are mentioning is not using a desktop 9900K in there, so no, they will not. They don't have the magic either to to get an insane battery life <coughs> out of a desktop component. No. It's just 9900K. It can consume well. What what kind of we 207 saw? 207 watts. Yeah, we, we saw. saw 207 well, watts. Well, that's overclocked. So yeah, yeah. Um, yeah but it, basically, to if you want to uh, limit the power, uh, so you use the power limits, then yes, you can get. A lot more, but then you will suffer in performance. Yeah. So, so if, if you yeah. can go either way, you can go uh, uh, high performance or extreme performance. So the, if the you trick will. is underclock it a lot, and then yeah, you underclock it. Yeah. yeah. 
And that's a trick you can also do in the yeah. Dragon Center and Underclock is, but of course, Yeah, still... the Dragon Center doesn't offer you that much uh, uh, options to do uh, underclocking, only the eco mode. Mm -hmm. But if you want to do uh, fully tune and even underclock, even yeah, uh, go extreme un underclock, even you can run it at 3 gigahertz or whatever, then uh, you, you should use the, the Intel uh, Extreme Tuning Tune, Utility, yeah. the XTU one. That's all also uh, installed on this notebook because that uses uh, that software to overclock it. But if you're going for extreme battery life, then this is not the notebook for you, then you will... No, don't go with an Ultra book or yeah. Yeah, maybe even a Chromebook. Yeah, then like, for example, yeah. the modern series, That's also the Prestige one thing series that Apple uh, has yeah. over other competitors is that uh, we're using generic Windows uh, software and Apple can tweak and uh, tune their own operating system as they want. Mm -hmm. So for if they want to do energy efficient, yes. But you cannot do both. You cannot do both high performance and energy efficient. No, that's that impossible. Won't work. No. They're still using the same chips or similar chips. Uh, okay, Bruno, you're saying it's an i9 RTX 2080. So yeah, it's power hungry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, with these, that's it, it. Yeah. That's always the thing with gaming notebooks. Yeah. A bit. If you want portable, yeah. this one's not for you. No. No. And especially gaming notebooks in general, because you have a dedicated yeah. GPU. Yeah. That's the now, most power hungry if, part. If you want to have portable and still pack a lot of punch, then go with the GS or, or like a workstation or WS uh, yeah. laptop, and then you will have a pretty good configuration and still uh, be carrying it around without any problems. Yeah. How about the price of this laptop? We've heard this question yeah, before. Yeah, it, it depends very much. It comes in different configurations. Yeah. Um, a lot of different screens, memory configuration, CPU configurations, yeah. GPU configuration, storage configuration, so many factors where uh, that's dependent yeah. on. I saw one price, I'm not sure about which queue it was exactly, but it was about 4.5 thousand euros. So in that ballpark, you should be looking. So yeah. if you downgrade the CPU and the GPU a little bit, then you can save some money there. But this will never be a very cheap one. No, it's all out with components, so of yeah, course this is it does a come at a cost. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And okay. there's also a model without the desktop CPU, then you will get the regular uh, i9-7950H. So that's like the GT76 Titan without the DT edition. Yeah, exactly. So the DT is dropped and then it will be a, a, an H mobile CPU inside, uh, which is a 6-core. And then they're saying, so this is actually more of a desktop replacement. This is definitely yeah. a desktop yeah. replacement. This is the best, yeah. This is faster than my desktop. <laughs> We've had desktop replacement notebooks before, but this is the one that's capturing that name the best. Yeah. 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 And also because... Because of the it, desktop CPU. It is yeah. like pretty, yeah. pretty much a desktop. The only thing they needed to do sense. next is to do like an RTX 2080 Ti desktop version of 300 plus watts, and then... Then yeah. your notebook will become like that. <laughs> yeah, then then two bricks will not be enough. No. <laughs> yeah, so I think we covered most the questions. Uh, Nintendo, I will st send you an email. Uh, Edward is still asking, does MSI also have a gaming laptop with a second screen? No, but you have three display outputs, for example, on this model. So plenty yeah. of possibilities to... You can even do like surround gaming with three screens. Can attach it all to... To your notebook, no problem. And uh, Nintendo is saying it's about three times my desktop speed. Yeah, my, it's it's far from my <laughs> desktop in terms of performance too. Yeah, still running an old quad core and GTX 1070, so this is this yeah. is much much faster than my than my desktop. Uh, FES nerd is saying RGB thermal paste. Yeah, should do that. Yeah, that's a new, yeah, I haven't seen that one yet. With Mystic Light support, so you can... Or maybe the cables the do, like, yeah, RGB and... It's dense. already kind of RGB cable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Almost. It's, uh, <laughs> it's like the color. some colors in there. So maybe uh, let's draw our final winner. Okay. And uh, let's close it off for today. So give me a second to draw our final winner. I hope it's an easier name this time. <laughs> Previous one was quite hard. Oh man, <laughs> good luck, dude. This one is way too hard for me. So our yeah. next winner is... NXVA, <laughs> I, I think it's an abbreviation, not sure. And Naj. 
Congratulations. Congratulations. You also won a 20 US dollar Steam code. We will email you in the coming days um, uh, to uh, provide you with the code. Um, still have some questions. I would say, how long can this laptop run a day without shutting down? If it's on power, yes, you can run it for a day without shutting it down. If it's on the battery, maybe if you're extremely underclocked, no, I, I think a day. No, it won't no. last a day. I, I think it will top out three to four hours or something. Just just browsing and stuff, yeah. Don't, don't expect any heavy loads because then the, the power draw on the battery will, yeah, will be very short. Okay, that was it for today. So for next week, we will have, well, today we did a lot of gaming stuff, but next week we'll talk about content creation. Um, so Jao will do that. He will talk about our new P100 and our PS341WU. Uh, so that's a desktop and uh, an ultra-wide monitor um, targeted at content creation. So good color reproduction, uh, big resolution. So definitely go check that out. Um, <laughs> Hussein is saying, <laughs> we feel always find names hard. Yes, but we're streaming worldwide, so we're getting names from all over the world, and they can be really hard. Yeah, and these are <laughs> usernames. I mean, that's probably not their real name. Yeah. Right? yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> We so thank no you for watching, everyone. Uh, thank you for tuning in this week. Definitely join us next week. And uh, see you then. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye.